What's going on, wrestling family? Welcome back to the channel. So apparently, The Rock on SmackDown signaled that he will betray his own cousin, Roman Reigns. Now, a lot of you guys have made me aware of this in the comment section, these signals that they put on SmackDown. I appreciate that. And let's see if Russell Lamia has the same train of thought. And by the way, if you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. And my theory has always been that The Rock and Cody Rhodes are working hand-to-hand -hand in tandem to be that one-two punch to take out Roman Thanos Reigns, okay? The Rock here to take the tribal chief position from him, to take the power of the bloodline away from him, to open up this lane for Cody Rhodes, who I like to call the Super Saiyan Pastor, to come through and take that title from Roman Reigns without worrying about the interference of the bloodline. That's just my theory. I could be wrong. 99.9% .9 of the chance I am. But anyway, let's get into the video. The Rock signaling he will betray Roman Reigns, and here's why. At top of today's news is The Rock's return to SmackDown and the fallout from him joining the Bloodline, particularly a fan theory that The Rock is setting Roman Reigns up for a fall. Jimmy is so happy it's to be in the Bloodline. It's pride goes before <laughs> a fall, and Roman Reigns' hubris is taken on mythological levels, just in time for someone to knock him off his mountain. While Cody Rhodes will be the man who finishes the story, The mm -hmm. Rock and Roman will only be starting their saga. Ex-user Jimmy Van took a look at a trail end of The Rock's promo, commenting, I rewatched Rock's promo. Look at the camera work when he says he'll do everything to make sure you walk out a loser. Looks like he's pointing at Roman. Oh yeah, Rock is a double agent on this one. While some people have- I agree that he's a double agent, but I don't know. You guys kept bringing this up in the comment section, and some of you guys are arguing back and forth, which is cool as long as it's respectful. But um, I went back and watched it. I can see from the camera angle where people can see this. At first, when I saw it, I was like, nah, he's not pointing at him. But then the second time I watched it, I was like, Roman, he is pointing directly to you, dog. Like, you got to pay attention to this. But the thing is, if Triple H, his writing has gotten so deep where he's using the cameraman to fixate some angles so it can make the wrestling fan base go crazy and assume, like, that they're seeing something that they don't. That is some masterful writing, bro. That That is crazy, man. But Hey, man, you guys let me know what you think about this. Agent on this one. While some people have a tendency to look too much into things, especially with WWE, which has traditionally been as subtle as a sledgehammer to the skull with its storytelling, the know, WWE has improved its storytelling ever since Triple H became chief content officer. You mm -hmm. may recall WWE hired someone to serve as its continuity chief to make sure that storylines actually make sense as they develop mm. over time. This was seen with the late great Bray Wyatt's return to the WWE with its meticulous White Rabbit storyline. It's clear that there's more to The Rock's return than just spoiling Cody Rhodes' WrestleMania dream. The beauty of this storyline is that fans just don't know whether The Rock plans to help Cody or hurt him. What is clear is that a showdown is coming between The Rock and Roman. How it plays out remains a mystery, and this should make for some of the best wrestling TV in years. Another potential clue that fans have noticed is when the Bloodline raised their finger up in the one sign, the Rock sign is much different. His mm. finger and thumb are extended in an L. No, he's not part of the Shoguns, but is this a sign that The Rock is the real head of the table? After all, The Rock is the biggest member of the Bloodline. His success is tenfold compared to any others of the Bloodline. Does this show that The Rock's ego is bigger and he's in it for himself? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. Next yeah, I mean, that's really interesting because it makes you wonder. Two things, guys. Um, when they say they have a curator in there, is a curator from like other television shows that have been successful, like Sons of Anarchy, or maybe the first couple seasons of Walking Dead? Like, has these have this person worked on other successful television shows? Because the stuff that WWE is doing right now is very cinematic, theatrical. I feel like I'm watching like one of my favorite TV series in wrestling, bro. It, it's just crazy. And also, the whole thing with the Rock having his finger up with the, the thumb extended. I know most of you guys have made me aware that. It looks like an L, so it's telling us that he's showing that Roman Reigns will lose. And I get that, and that could be a clue. And the thing is with Triple H, he makes you feel like you're crazy because you don't want to go too over the top and then think too hard at the stuff where you're you're just going crazy. Or you don't want to think too little about it and you miss out all the signals along you know, the way for the ride. And with The Rock, when he had his finger up like that, I was like, okay, well, he could be doing the L. But also, when I grew up, a lot of people, whenever they hold up their fingers, whether it's two fingers, three fingers, they always had the thumb out because they felt like it was cool, right? They always they always had the, the thumb out whenever they did and everything because it, it just looked cool. And I was like, maybe the Ross, the Rock is an older gentleman, so that could be it. But it can also be the L for loser. But I, I don't know what to think, bro. I ain't going to lie to you guys, but it's still fun. Two big bouts planned for WrestleMania. It looks like fans could see two major matches at WrestleMania 40 besides the much-anticipated Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns matchup. Fightful Select Sean Ross Sapp was asked about the long-rumored Jay versus Jimmy Uso match at WrestleMania, and Sapp answered, that was the plan to the best of my knowledge. 
The yeah, WWE we need that. has done an impressive job maintaining the heat between Jay and Jimmy without it boiling over before their first one-on-one -on -one matchup. Many fans doubted if the WWE could keep them apart between SummerSlam, but they've allowed just enough interaction to remind the fans and confrontation is inevitable without cooling things off. Maybe they did spoil it a little at the Royal Rumble, but that was only just a brief tussle. Don't be surprised if Jimmy cost Jay his Intercontinental Championship shot against Gunther, mm. leading to a clash at WrestleMania. There's also another matchup being discussed, but this one is still up in the air. Fightful Sean Ross Sapp also discussed Logan Paul's opponent at WrestleMania 40, noting LA Knight's name has been discussed. That was the plan. I don't still know if it is the plan, but that was discussed at one point. Right now, it looks like the WWE is setting things up for a program between Drew McIntyre and LA Knight. Whether that happens immediately or down the road remains to be seen as the two superstars are on separate brands. As for LA Knight vs Logan Paul, this would make for a fantastic match at WrestleMania as fans could expect some great promo battles leading up to the match. I agree. This could be the WWE's chance to put championship gold around LA's waist and give the US Championship back to a full-time competitor. While we understand the WWE wants to belt on Paul right now to draw in even more mainstream publicity going into Mania, Paul won't need the title after the WWE showcase event. Next up, I agree. I, you know, I think that's probably just the obvious route. I don't, I don't know anyone else they could put the U.S. Championship on because either the people there who are available either always they, they had opportunities after opportunities at the U.S. title, or they've had it multiple times, or they're just not ready to get that belt. And LA Knight is sitting right there. He deserves to get a title at this point, and it is a perfect opportunity to do that. Logan Paul will help him have a fantastic match. Uh, LA Knight will help Logan Paul have a fantastic promo with them going back and forth. So it's it's a match made in heaven. I don't know why you wouldn't pull the trigger on that. That that is, is crazy to me. And by the way, when Jay and Jimmy Uso race each other at WrestleMania, Jay better have white Air Forces on and Jimmy better have the black ones on. That's all I'm saying. But hopefully we just have a good match. Turning soon, there's potential good news for AEW as Dave Meltzer reports that Dr. Britt Baker has been training hard. Although mm. she isn't cleared for wrestling, Meltzer reports her return shouldn't be long. Baker has been off AEW TV for some time and for whatever reason, AEW hasn't been used her to cut promos to help others get over. AEW's women's division is mediocre at best and a mess at worst. Hopefully she'll be back soon and while she isn't carrying hey, the division on the back, the recent addition of Deanna Perazzo and the rumored debut of Sasha Banks should help very much. While former AEW yeah. Women's Champion JB Hayter's return date remains a mystery, her return can't come sooner enough. And, and it's so sad, man, to see that the women's division over there is kind of like that. Like, I watch AEW here and there, but they got people over there that I do love. Like, I love Jamie Hayter, right? I love Deanna Prazo. Loved her since, like, when she was in uh, Impact that whole time. Like, she's fantastic, bro. You got uh Dr. Britt Baker. Obviously, she's not back yet. I mean, you got so much talent over there. It's so weird to see that that women's division isn't doing that great with so much of that talent over there. I get that you can blame it on Tony Khan and things like that, but it's still like, bro, like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't really understand it, but, you know, much success to the women in that division over there. Hopefully they get they just do. Finally, an NXT superstar injured again. Who was that? Last but not least, apparently oh, bad Nikita. news for NXT superstar Nikita Lyons as Dave Meltzer is reporting she is injured again. Lyons has been repeatedly bitten by the injury bug with her previous injury being an ACL tear that kept her out of action for nearly a year. Hopefully, the WWE can determine what's going on and get Lyons back into competitive shape. While she has plenty of talent, the WWE might be reluctant to give her a push if they feel she's injury prone and looking at her time yeah. in NXT. It's difficult to say she's not. But there you have it, folks. I will look at Yeah, that sucks for her, man. That sucks for her. Like, although I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of her in the ring, but I get that she has superstar potential. Like I, I'll give her that. But you know, the more you get injured, she started to look more like, you know, Tegan Knox. Remember, she kept getting injured over and over, same thing over and over. It looks like that for her. And we all know tons of wrestlers who could potentially get a push, but injury got in the way and held their career back. And some people, unfortunately, and I'm just you know, I don't wish this on anybody, eventually get released because they can't rely on them to do their job. You know what I'm saying? And they, they're probably like, you know, knowing Sean and Triple H, they'll probably be like, I don't know him personally, but they're probably like, we don't want to cause more harm to you, bro. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to put you in a position and then it wouldn't be fair to somebody else who's healthy and ready for you to take their slot. So, you know, hopefully she has a speedy recovery. Whatever that injury is, they didn't really say what that is, but, you know, hopefully, you know, she has a speedy recovery. But anyways, Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate you guys. Salute. Peace. Have a good day.